Hey everybody, it's Reverend Russell. Oh, wait a minute. Hey everybody, it's Reverend Russell here at Unity of Fairfax. I came across something recently that I wanted to share with you. It might help put some perspective on the times in which we find ourselves. And it's a little piece entitled, Imagine You Were Born in 1900. So if you were born in 1900, when you were 14, World War I began, and it ended when you were 18, and 22 million people had been killed. And soon after that, a global pandemic, the Spanish flu appeared, and 50 million people around the world were killed by that, and that ended when you were 20 years old. And then when you were 29 years old, the great economic crisis started with the collapse of the New York Stock Exchange, and there was inflation and unemployment and famine. And then when you were 33 years old, the Nazis came to power in Germany. And in 1939, World War II began, and it lasted until you were, until you were 45, rather. And 60 million people were dead, including an attempted genocide of 6 million Jews. When you were 52, the Korean War began. And on your 62nd birthday, the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, which actually, actually was the subject of my message here at Unity of Fairfax on December 5th, so go back and watch the video. When you were 64 years old, the Vietnam War began and ended when you were 75. So there are any number of folks born in recent times who may think their grandparents have no idea of just how difficult life is, but they would clearly be mistaken. Recent generations have had to survive several catastrophes and disasters and wars and pandemics, you name it. So today, we have all the comforts of this world and the COVID-19 pandemic. And let's be honest, we all have pandemic fatigue. We're tired of these things, and we're tired of the need for the vaccines, and perhaps we're even more tired about fighting over the need for masks and vaccines and all of that. And we just want this darn thing to be done. Well, fortunately for us, even in our complaining and in our whining, we still have food and electricity, safe water to drink, plumbing, Wi-Fi, networks, TikToks, and all of the amazing things that make life possible. We still have our cars, we still have our electronics. We have live stream from Unity of Fairfax. That's pretty cool if you ask me. We have Zoom, we have all kinds of ways to be connected, and the level of complaining is still through the roof. And yes, we are still making progress on all kinds of issues of the day. So last Sunday, December 5th, we inaugurated the Advent Week of Peace. And I'm keenly aware, as you are, that there are several assaults, it seems, being made on our collective as well as individual sense of peace of mind. But I invite you to take these few words to heart. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. These are words attributed to Jesus found in the Gospel of John, and they serve as a reminder that the same peace that was in him is the same peace that is alive in each and one of us, and the same peace that have, has allowed people from time immemorial, not just those born in 1900, to move through any challenges that they've experienced. You see, a small change in our perception can generate seeming miracles. So let us be thankful that we are alive and that we have every divine idea at our disposal to not only survive, but to actually thrive. And the truth is, we are thriving. We're not comfortable about it right now, but we are thriving. Let's remember that's the truth of the matter. So let's do everything we can to protect each other, to support each other, and to love one another. Peace be with you and namaste.